I could probably start this video out with some clickbait, you know, things saying Starfield's dying. But, I mean, in a way it kind of is, but I still think it can make a comeback when survival mode is launched, if survival mode is as good as I think it might be. Now, the caveat being it all, they also need to overhaul exploration. They need to overhaul outpost building. But if they can do both that, Starfield can make a comeback like Cyberpunk. But right now, it is not doing good, and I have the data to prove it. Now, PC is the biggest market generally for a Bethesda game. And Steam is the biggest platform on PC, so we can look at Steam charts to see how the game is currently doing. And what we see is that in October, the game dropped off 66.61%. In this month, it dropped off an additional 7.47%. Overall, that's a lot of downturn. Now, do we have any data for the other platforms? No, but we can surmise, based on the data available, that the other platforms are experiencing a very similar effect. And we can back that surmise up. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's probably not very grammatically correct, but... Oh, well, too late now. <laughs> we can back it up by going to Google Trends, where we find out that Starfield has dropped off to 12% interest. A drop of 88%. So, overall, the Starfield is really is kind of dying. But is there any good news? I mean... Well, I got you guys covered. So, there actually is some good news. So, first off, Microsoft has begun stepping in to course correct ZeniMax. Pete Hines, who has had a very checkered history with the community, he has lied, he has gotten arguments, he has disrespected the community, he has also said that Fault 4 was their best-selling game, Changed it to say that it was just his opinion, and then way later said he's never actually shown sales statistics, so he just basically flat out made that up. And internally, it is rumored on Slash v Slash that he has had a lot of influence over the course of the directions of the games. So him being retired, which in all likelihood was, uh, you know, you either retire or we're firing you, after his comments to the FTC... He was replaced by Matt Booty, who is Phil Spencer's second in command. Now, Matt Booty is going to have complete control over Zenimax, so he'll be able to actually fix stuff. And one of the reasons they said this was done was to prevent other Red Falls from happening. But let's be honest, now we can see how quick Starfield is dropping off. It is probably also to help course correct Bethesda itself, because you do not want another Starfield to happen. And... There actually has been some humility from a former developer where they flat out said that they thought they were infallible until 76 happened. And I kind of imagine that mentality continued onward into Starfield because they, I'm not going to lie, like some of the news for Starfield kind of like sounded like gaslighting from a narcissist. Because they said, oh, hey, you know, we could have made, like, a handful of systems that, you know, with really good content. But you guys wanted that huge open world. You guys wanted Fall uh, 76 to be multiplayer. It's like, no, 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 no. People wanted a co-op game. And from the Arcane Leaks, we know you guys were chasing a uh, live service game. So don't try to pin that on the community. That was uh, entirely you guys. But... With the new change in administration, over time, we will start seeing improvements. And hopefully, the Mick Gordon situation with Doom will be resolved before, and now for the good news, Doom Year One gets announced. Now, for those who are not apprised of what has happened, essentially, id Software flat out stole Mick Gordon's work. They reused clips they did not have the right to use, and then they didn't pay him for a lot of it. Now... As of right now, I don't personally know if they've already resolved this, but I do imagine before year one is announced, this issue is going to be resolved because this will be one of the first things someone like Matt Booty is going to want to take care of. And from the leak that let us know year one was in development, now, keep in mind, the name may change, right? Right now, it's called year one, or at the time when this was put together, it was called year one. Now, it might be called something else. But from that same leak, we know that Oblivion's getting a remaster. We know Fault 3 is getting a remaster. We know Ghostwire Tokyo's getting a sequel. 
We, Dishonored 3 is coming out now. At this point in time, like I said, the Arcane League basically did happen. So we kind of do know that Arcane had a quasi-civil war where the left did try to cancel pretty much everyone in the studio, leading to a lot of bitter feelings, but also why their games kind of hard veered more toward cultural Marxist, a.k.a. wokeness. So, me personally, I have no interest in Dishonored 3, but I know a lot of people who really like Arcane, at least online, are going to be super stoked about that. Elder Scrolls Online is getting an expansion. Not really impressive, in my opinion. There's the Mysterious Project Platinum. And, and I'll keep in mind this, right? There might be a secret Fallout game in development. I mean, beyond Fallout Shelter Online, they actually might have been the rumored new Fallout game that was in development, a spinoff. Because all we really heard was basically, hey, there's a Fallout spinoff in development, if a part of the leak, a rumor years back. Like, it's just a one-off rumor. Like, it's just, it's just in development. No details on it, no nothing. And then everyone's like, oh, speculate, 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 speculate. And then nothing really came of it. So most people just kind of forgot it happened. But I have a particularly good memory at times. So on the horizon, there is actually a lot of really good news for Bethesda. It's just that in the short term, we're going to have to wait and see how Matt Booty starts course correcting the studio. Now, first of all, they need a new engine. Creation 2 is not Creation 2. It's basically Creation with a slight modification. The modders have already proven that. They've already talked about it. We did not get a brand new engine. I don't even know why they even tried to pull that scam flat out. They were originally calling it like 1.5 and the proper 2 is not going to be until Elder Scrolls 6. So I have absolutely no idea what, what they were thinking with that. Like, that is like one of the most easily disproven lies they could have made. And they went with it. So, stuff like that, I really hope to see change in the future. Without Pete Hines, we, we hopefully will get some more community-friendly marketing. That's not going to be adversarial with fandoms, like Fault Fandom not being happy with blatant, really bad lore changes by a writer who flat out brags he doesn't give a crap about established canon. Which, if you're ever wondering why Fault New Vegas had a really good story that fit inside the Fault universe, while Bethesda's work didn't, it's because Emil flat out does not care about canon, and that is why him and Pete Hines have one of the lowest reputations inside the community. Going forward, I mean, we do have some good stuff to look forward to. So it's not all doom and gloom. But it's going to be rough for a bit. And hopefully, Microsoft fixes this problem at Bethesda and their other studios. And that's all we have to say about it. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like, subscribe button. Peace out.